Okay, it's time for another two time, like, oh my god. Welcome to Tube Time on Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. And I know it's been quite some time since I got these tubes here. But I thought today I'd make the serious business push pull tube amplifier. So, it's going to be made out of three tubes. This is one of them. This is a dual triode ECC83, I believe. Yes. That's an ECC83, little circuit that I made. This is going to be the phase splitter and first amplification stage, because I'm using one of the triodes as the amplification, and the other triode as the signal splitter and phase inverter. I'll put up schematics later on. And these are the output tubes that I'm going to use. Now I've already put sockets on both of them just to make sure they both fit okay. This is a 6N3C or whatever that means. I don't read Russian. I think that's actually 6R3P or something. I don't know. But what I do know is these are high power pentodes. I mean high power beam tetrodes which will work well in an amplifier and they even come with a spec sheet so I know what all the pins are and yes it's in Russian but I speak the universal language of electronics so it doesn't matter and on the other side I've got everything I need to know and it's like we need negative 14 volts of grid bias. So, I'm going to use a cathode type bias by putting a resistor between the cathode and the ground. And that will give us our grid bias as well. Alrighty then. What I'm doing here is I want to find out what cathode resistor I'm going to use. Because I'm going to use cathode biasing, which basically means putting a resistor between the cathode and the ground so the cathode is at a higher voltage than the grid. So instead of having to apply a negative voltage to the grid, all I have to do is make sure that the cathode's voltage is, well in this case, 17 volts, because that's, according to the data sheet that came with this tube, that's the bias voltage we need. So if the grid is at zero volts, and the cathode is at 17 volts, then the grid's voltage relative to the cathode is going to be negative 17 volts, and that's what we need. So what I'm going to do is measure the voltage that we see across this resistor. I'm just going to wait for that to get up to its full temperature. And if the voltage across this resistor is too low, then I'll use a resistor of a larger value. If the voltage across that resistor is too high, I'll lower that resistor. So anyway, I'll go over the circuit while it's warming up. So I've got the positive. Which is going to come out of the high voltage supply. It's going into this transformer here, which I'm just using as a dummy load. Then out of the transformer, into the anode, or the plate, whatever you want to call it. Also, some of that positive voltage is going into this 10K resistor that I've mocked up. So that's going to feed our second grid. I've got the first grid, or the control grid, whatever you want to call it, connected to ground through this resistor here, which is a 470K doesn't have to be 470k, it can be anything really from a 100 kilo ohms to a mega ohm in most cases. And I'm using a 470 ohm to connect the cathode to the ground. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the high voltage, that's had plenty of time to warm up. And let's see what voltage we get across the resistor. According to this, we've got nothing at all. Because I forgot to plug it in. Because I'm an idiot. It's no wonder it's not doing anything. Right. So, I've got my high voltage power supply plugged in now. I can turn this on and we'll see what voltage we get across the resistor. Okay. 
Seems to be dropping for some reason. Okay, there we go. Okay, we got over 20 volts going through that, so we need to use a smaller resistor. Let's just see what the voltage is. Let's just turn the power on again. This power supply is a bit dodgy, actually, for some reason. It's, uh, come on, work. There we go. Got a bit of a dodgy switch. Okay, so we got 21 volts there. Okay, so ideally I think I would need a 330 ohm resistor there. That's the next value I would try. But anyway, as it is right now, this would probably do some amplifying. I'm going to turn that on again. Turn on the power. I'm not hearing anything from the speaker, not even a slightest faint buzz. I don't know if that resistor's going to burn up on me, but we'll see. We've got 21 volts going across it. Now I'm going to touch the grid with this wire here. See if we get anything out of the speaker. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's good. It shows it's working. Okay, well let's try playing some music through this thing as it is right now. Now I've got my reel to reel hooked up coming through this capacitor here. So this is from the reel to reels line out. Alright, so I'll start the reel to reel playing. Let's see if we get any sound out of this thing. I don't think it's going to be very loud at this point, but let's have a listen anyway. Okay, there it is. I don't know if my ugly face is getting in the shot. Okay, so we know that works. That should be a lot louder once I put a capacitor across that resistor. Alright, okay, there we go. Put a 470 microfarad capacitor across there. Making sure, of course, that it's at least 25 volts. And the polarity's right, because we don't want anything exploding now. Should be a little bit louder now. It's definitely louder. Well, anyway, enough about that because now I want to get on and build the actual output stage. Okay, now it looks like we got something. Yes, I know I'm using cardboard, but I think it'll work well enough. Okay, I'll pull the camera back a bit so you can see a bit more of it. I haven't put in the phase inverter circuit yet, but I'm just testing that both sides of the output stage are working, so I'll just touch the base. I'll just touch the grid of each tube and see if we get anything out of the speaker. Okay, that one's working. Let's do the same with this grid. This do. And that one appears to be working. So, next, next thing to do is put the final piece of circuitry in and we'll see how well this thing works. Okay, I have built it and it's working. Now, I want to do this quick because I've only got everything put in with hot glue. So, I just want to do this video quickly and then get everything put in properly before the glue melts. So, Put in the phase inverter and splitter and preamp circuit right there and everything else you saw earlier. Put in a volume control which goes into the grid of the cathode of the 12XA7 or ECC83, depending on what you want to call it. And it works. So let's give it a listen. What the fuck thing? <laughs> oh please, not that! Anything but that. I cannot apologize enough for that atrocity that you just heard. So let's do a proper test with this amplifier. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what was going on there with the recording. But I can tell you. This thing is so freaking loud. 
That's better, that's a more suitable volume level. Don't want to annoy the neighbours now, do they? Also, I don't know why this recording keeps dropping out and coming back. That's actually on the actual tape itself, it's nothing to do with this. So I'll just stop that. And there we go, there is my push-pull serious business tube amplifier. Still got a little bit of per refining to do, I mean, after all, still need to get the bias voltages right. Now I made, I will admit, I made a little mistake because somewhere along the line I forgot what the bias voltage should be and I thought it was 17 volts when in fact it's supposed to be 14 but I've decided to leave those 470 ohm resistors in because with the addition of the other tubes that's going to pull the power supply's voltage down a bit which is also going to lower the voltage across those resistors so I thought let's see what the voltage across those resistors is now and go from there. Now I'm just going to take this meter I'm going to put it onto volts I'm just going to measure across one of the resistors to see what our bias voltage actually is, hopefully without making something go bang because I don't really like that I'm allergic to sudden loud noises ok 13.5 well, it's close enough. I mean, that could do with about 500 millivolts more, but I don't think that's going to make any difference, really. So I guess you're desperate to see this from the other side, so we don't just see all this manky wiring here. Well, let's take a look. Here we go. This is the amplifier that I made. I don't know where the microphone is, so I'm just going to have to talk like this. Now, I don't know why my volume control is going in at such a weird angle. But then I am only making this out of cardboard, and some people might scoff at that, but I'm just doing what I can with what I got. And here's how it looks from the top. The two output tubes, which are probably still warm from the previous run, so... There's a 12XA7 or ECC83. One of the capacitors and the transformer. Now, I know that that transformer that I've put in there focus I thought I'd turn the autofocus on this thing off actually it's that way now I know this transformer isn't the best type of transformer for this amplifier but at the moment that's the most suitable one I have so that's the one I'm going to have to use I'm sure with a much better transformer this will be even louder and more bassier not that it didn't have plenty of bass already, but still. So anyway, I'm going to say I'm quite happy with that. Now I'm going to have to do is make this look a bit better. And it's going to be really, really good. But um, that's going to be for another video because I'm sure this has taken up too much time already. Rabbiting on again like I normally do, so yeah. And for those of you interested, here is the full schematic of the amplifier, which I'm going to leave on the screen for a few seconds. So you can just pause it and ponder over it if you wish. Anyway, I've got to go now, so until next time, goodbye. Okay, I'm just testing here. Testing the amplifier. Because for some, I've got to say something again. Because for some reason, even though I know I said the right words, the computer decided to re-edit my words, unbeknownst to me. So I've got to say that whole line again and hope the computer doesn't screw things up.